What's up guys and welcome back to the intro webs. My name is Kyle Brock, I'm a surfer and a filmmaker and today I want to share with you a super important video all about surfboard selection. The reason I'm shooting this video today is because so many people get it wrong and it has a massive, drastic, significant, monumental impact on your surfing progression. Let's jump into it now. If you're new here, my name is Kale. I'm a filmmaker and a free surfer, and here you'll find all sorts of epic surf content like tutorials to help you surf better, important reviews, and more. So subscribe down below and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. There is a huge misconception in the surfing world where surfers think in order to progress, they need to gradually refine their surfboard into a sharp, thin, waterproof potato crisp in order to look like the pros or just look better than they are. Now I get it and I have made the same mistakes for the same reasons before. But what if I told you that there was actually a precise formula that you could use to actually determine the perfect surfboard to suit your unique individual needs. Things like its shape, its outline, its volume, three very important things. I'm gonna share with you a little bit more about that formula later on in this clip. But now let's have a look at the first sign that perhaps your surfboard is not working for you. It's something not quite obvious. It's a compromised takeoff. Super important, let me show you what I'm talking about. A surfer's takeoff should be nice and smooth. It isn't a burpee. It shouldn't be a two-stage setup process. It should allow one to glide into a wave and roll down the line with enough speed to perform the maneuvers that they want to. One key moment where you can gauge the effectiveness of your surfboard is the moment between where the paddling for the wave stops and the pop-up begins to take place. Notice here how in this moment that the surfer is actually moving backwards up the wave before they stand. This is because they haven't been able to produce enough forward momentum to be in front of the upward pulling forces of the swell. This can be a sign of paddling inadequacy, but in many instances, it is actually a sign that the surfboard is too small or lacks enough volume for the surfer. This particular surfer has a great takeoff normally, however, had to use a backup board for this coaching session. Importantly, the board had two liters less volume than normal and had a drastic impact on the surfer's entry into the wave, which, as I've spoken about before many times, can totally ruin a potentially good ride. So a big question would be, how do you know if this is you without actually being filmed? Well, I guess if you're finding that you're constantly paddling, as you guys know, is a super important factor in determining your overall surfing outcomes. And as a result, it should thus be a fundamental underpinning of surfboard selection. Now, before I share with you the next sign that your surfboard might not be working for you, I wanna to talk to you about my new, brand new online course, The Ultimate Surfboard Buying Guide. I receive countless, countless messages on Instagram, on Facebook, here on YouTube from people asking for board advice. Which surfboard should I buy? Now, I can't actually go through my specific formula with everybody individually. So what I did was actually create an online course to teach you that formula so that you can come up with the perfect surfboard criteria for you and your unique situation. The course is super cheap, it's super easy to follow, and it's super easy to use. I've put the link down in the description below, and I'm going to play the trailer for the course at the end of this video. Does that sound okay? Cool, great, excellent. Okay, sign number two that your surfboard is not working for you, and this is another not so obvious one. It's nose diving all the time. I see this most commonly on surfers who ride long, beginner-friendly boards. Although these boards are fantastic choices for surfers looking to progress through those early stages of their surfing careers, once they start catching unbroken green waves, they can start to become a hindrance to the surfer's progression. This is simply because these types of boards do not physically fit into a moderate sized wave, especially if the surfer is riding straight down the wave most of the time. 
If I see a surfer is constantly nose diving when they commit to a wave, then there are two things I can recommend. One, try a smaller board with still enough volume to achieve great paddling, or two, paddle in for the wave on an angle. If the surfer paddles in on an angle and yet constantly finds that they are popping up at the bottom of the wave still, then I recommend trying a shorter board because this is a sign that they simply can't handle the increased length of the board. And finally, it's the last sign that your surfboard is holding you back and it's actually the most obvious one. Paddling for lots of waves and not catching them. I find that there is a particular demographic who adhere to this uh, third sign and it's the surfer who's been doing it intermittently for a long time but has gradually lost their fitness for the sport but hasn't made a correlative board adjustment to suit those new fitness levels. If I had to put a number on it, I would say that you should be catching around 75 to 85% of the waves that you paddle for, at least in a given session. If this number is higher, it might be because of the crowds or a current or rip, but it's most likely because your board has too little volume to allow you to paddle efficiently enough to catch waves. This coaching session where my client was under volume by only two liters really made this super obvious to me. This surfer is a great paddler, normally catches a bunch of waves every time. However, in this session struggled in some pretty sure thing moments on this particular board. Now, what could have been a poor session attributed to skill set should actually be attributed to board choice. And this is a really key distinction to make if we want to progress with our surfing. If this sounds like you, then either your paddling needs a lot of work or you could be on the wrong board. How do you distinguish whether paddling is the issue or it's the surfboard? Well, it's pretty simple. If you feel really fatigued in the back muscles, in the neck, maybe the traps after 20, 30 minutes of surfing, then chances are your paddling needs some work regardless. If you're fine, you feel really fit and strong, then chances are it could be the surfboard. Generally speaking, I see too many beginner to intermediate surfers on sharp outlined boards just like the pros use. Unless the surfer is really leith, mobile and fit and doesn't weigh very much, these boards typically don't work for the average surfer. Even myself, someone who's surfed for almost 20 years, still uses a fish shaped board for 90% of my surfs. This is generally what I recommend for most clients as well. this one helped you guys this is one of the most fundamental important things of your surfing life to get right it's the surfboard that you ride i hope i can help you determine the perfect surfboard for you and your unique needs with the ultimate surfboard buying guide the trailer for which i'm going to play right now if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the like button and join me on instagram at kales broccoli guys i'll see you soon Woo. <laughs> Buying a board is not something to be rushed. You need to independently assess where you're at and use a formula to determine your needs. Too often I see surfers go into a board purchase with either no goals or very unrealistic goals, which results in a poor board choice, slow and poor progression overall. Where do you wanna be ability-wise in the next six months to a year from now? I need to bring some of you back down to reality. And on the flip side, I need to encourage some of you to actually think bigger. Have a look at the board evolution and have a think about where you stand. I would much rather have an appropriate surfboard for 90% of my surfs then have one that is appropriate for only 10% of my surfs. They pick a highly advanced surfboard because they see someone like Kelly Slater riding it or Mick Fanning riding it. And yet, this is probably one of the biggest mistakes that people make in surfing. For a small time investment now, you could save hundreds of painstaking hours further on down the track as you try to find the right board. Let's get it right now, 
shall we?